This is a Dude Studios production. And hey, I'm the dude. Welcome back to Hey Bartender Podcast Quick Shot Episode. I know, guys, I haven't done... Guys and girls, got to address everybody. And all the other people, guys, girls, potatoes. Uh, uh, you, you know, there's too big of a list. Everybody. I know uh, that uh, I haven't done one of these episodes in a, quite a while. Been kind of uh, busy with other things. You guys, Some of you guys might have seen that I got my brown belt in in my martial arts class i'm really happy about that really proud about that thank you for everybody uh, who congratulated me on getting my brown belt really meant a lot to me i spent a lot of time freaking out on how i was going to do on the test and everything turned out just fine uh, especially when all the brown belts and the black belts circled around me and took turns uh beating up on me that was a lot of fun but uh, nonetheless, let's get down to business. This is the Wednesday Quick Shot episode. So, I went diving around for today's shot special, and I found something called the Bazooka Joe Shot. Now, uh, everybody knows Bazooka Joe. It's that bubble gum that could potentially break your teeth, but it also had that cheesy comic that came inside with uh, the gum. A lot of baseball players use it if they're not uh, chewing on tobacco or sunflower seeds. But this is a shot. Now, how you make the Bazooka Joe shot, the ingredients go as follows. One half ounce of blue carousel, one half ounce of cream to banana liqueur, and one half ounce of Bailey's Irish cream. Now, there's two ways you can enjoy this. The first way is you can put some ice in your shaker, pour all the ingredients inside, shake the shit out of it. Once again, thank you, Randy Lynn. And pour it into a shot glass and go. Or... You can chill the ingredients in the freezer, uh, chill each ingredient in the freezer for 30 minutes. First, pour banana liqueur in the glass, rest the spoon on the side wall, you know, layer the shot. I mean, you know, this, uh, this, uh, uh, food, food diva, food diva, uh, is over explaining it. You layer the shot and, uh, you know, do it that way. But most people, when they decide that they want to, try a new shot or try a shot at all or have a shot at all they are impatient so as this bartender would like to advise all you people when it comes to the bazooka joe shot just put it in your shaker shake the shit out of it and strain it into a shot glass your customers will thank you for it yeah it has been a while since i've done one of these wednesday quick shot episodes uh it's not that i was uh running out of ideas or anything like that it's just um, you know, a couple things, a couple curveballs hit me, uh, when it came to doing this podcast, life is doing fine, uh, it, for the most part, but, uh, there were a couple curveballs that kind of put me, uh, put me down a little bit. And so, you know, I had to sit back and relax for a little bit, but it also gave me an opportunity and a little bit of time to bring on some other bartenders and, uh, talk about, uh, the industry, talk about you guys. Uh, because you know, there's, you know, isn't it fun to sit around, uh, with your coworkers and sit and BS a little bit about the day or you know, not necessarily coworkers, but people that are also in your same industry and talk about your day, talk about your customers, swap funny stories, uh, or give some interesting advice. That's the whole point of this show. That's, uh, that's why I do this so I can, inform and entertain you guys with some great bartending stories and uh, hopefully some of you guys take something from it if you don't hopefully i entertained you uh so you know there's that but the one thing i want to talk about today is the hashtag that i have decided to take over uh if some of you follow me on instagram or facebook you'll notice that i have taken over the hashtag uh this is a real job. Now, the, where this came from is uh, from this deep-seated hate for people, customers, that feel that they're above people that work in the service industry. You know, why don't you get a real job? Okay, how many times have you servers heard that? Now, I've told you the story before. Uh, I'm going to recap it uh, briefly. 
uh, there was a guy that came into my bar one time and he said, well, what do you do this for? Or, you know, you know, tell you what, I can get you a job at this computer company. I'm not going to say their name because they still exist and they could sue me. And uh, you won't, you know, you'll make, you'll start out at like $10 an hour. Your medical benefits will kick in after six months. And after a year, you'll start working with a 401k. That's all stuff you don't have here. And I stopped and I looked at him and I said, first of all, I do this job for fun. I have another job. And secondly, the other job, my medical benefits kicked in almost immediately. My 401k kicked in almost immediately. And I make $18 an hour. And the department that you just said that you want me to work in, if I read it right in the trade magazines, the company that you work for is going to shut it down in six months. The guy had nothing else to say to me about anything. In fact, I never saw him again. Uh, you know, he probably went home saying, God, that bartender was an asshole. That's typical. Well, especially when all of us servers and bartenders decide to be assertive and talk back, we're automatically an asshole, no matter whether we're right or we're wrong. And we're, uh, that we just insulted the customer and, and the odds of them calling our boss are probably about seven to seven to one. So let's get serious about this for a second. These people say, why don't you get a real job? Job, J-O-B. They don't say career. They say, why don't you get a real job? So I decided to look up on uh, online in Webster's Dictionary, uh, what is a job? Well, the job is a noun. Uh, the word job is a noun. And one of the definitions is a specific duty, role, or function. And so anything can be a job. I mean, uh, you're uh, uh, washing the dishes at home. That's a job. Uh, serving food at a restaurant. That's a job. Polishing a car, detail shop. That's a job. Anything in this world can be considered a job. But nobody ever can, uh, uses the word career. They say job. So that made me think. You're not really encouraging people to... Do, uh, do a career, you're just saying you deserve to be in a different job or whatever. Now, most of us servers, bartenders, uh, we ser and people that work in the restaurant industry in general, servers, bartenders, cooks, dishwashers, we do the job because we need work, we need money, but in a lot of cases, especially with the bartenders that I've been talking to over the last couple of years I've been doing this show, we actually enjoy it. Isn't that weird? Go on to Instagram, go on to TikTok, and you, uh, you know, use hashtag bartender, and you will find bartenders all over the place, all over the world, that actually do love what they do. Now, some of us people work in uh, rougher restaurants than others. Some people, the fine dining, that can be considered rougher than others, but nonetheless, we all do the same job. We can uh, take that job and take it to another location. We can take it to another state, another city, another country, and still be able to do our jobs because it is transferable everywhere. There hasn't been many upgrades to the service industry. Well, I, that's that. Well, that may not be true because I walked into a McDonald's the other day, and instead of probably because of the whole COVID thing, they uh, put up uh, kiosks, touch screens, so you can place your orders that way. Uh, Sonic does uh, does the kiosk thing, uh, but that's more of a reminiscent of like the '50s drive uh, drive in type of situation. And we all are able to make money doing it. Granted, it's not a lot, comparatively speaking, to some of the schmucks out there. But our work. We go home, we smell funny because of whatever food that we happen to be working with that day, whether we're working around a, a French fry a French fry cooker or we work in a seafood restaurant or whatever. We Granted, we smell funny, but we do go home feeling tired. We do go home sweaty. We do uh, go home and with the knowledge that eventually we're going to have a paycheck. Now, some of these people that out there that make like six figures a year, 
they sit at a desk all the time and sit around and get fat. You know, that's why they call them fat cats. I think, you know, that's, but that I don't, I didn't look that up. Don't take my word for it. But, uh, these corporate people, they sit at a desk and you know what? If they got up from their desk and decided to go to lunch, uh, because you know, most of them don't pack their lunches to go into the corporate world. Uh, you know, it's the big thing is to go have what is referred to as a two martini lunch, even though I don't think they considered, uh, uh, they drink during lunch anymore. Uh, maybe it's a one joint coffee break or maybe, uh, well now the big thing right now is to go work out during your, during your lunch break, go, uh, put on your running shoes, run around the block a couple times, or even in some cases in, uh, some of the big corporations, they actually have a gym somewhere in the building for the uh for the big wigs to go work out for a little while during their lunch hour but the big wigs uh that go work out during their lunch hour yeah that's all fine and dandy but there's also the people that work out in the field that uh don't get that sort of thing you know uh it's like uh, companies that i've worked for in the past you get on their corporate website and you see deals for oh i don't know cars home insurance, uh, car insurance, uh, 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 let's see, like gym memberships. It's all for the area where their corporate office is. You know, if they're a national company, some there might be other deals located uh, for that specific area, but when you don't live in those specific areas and you work out in the trenches, you don't get anything out of that. Which is kind of like what uh, uh, the service industry gets. Now, uh, I think people get a little bit upset that they feel like they're obligated to tip us. And, you know, just because of the way uh, our economy is right now, yeah, we kind of need those tips because uh, the cost of living in America, I'm, I'm not going to speak for anywhere else. Uh, you know, there was a guy in Spain that told me that he makes plenty of money and has benefits. Um, Adam Hall from a previous episode, he mentioned that he doesn't make tips, but his customers, uh, have a tally on drinks they bought for him. And, and he, I think he said he had benefits and stuff like that, but here in America, that doesn't happen that often in the service industry. And it's unfortunate because in some cases, in some of the restaurants that are out there, in the service industry, they expect you to look look a certain way. You got to dress a certain way. Some places even expect your body to be a certain way. Now, I can even the whole hashtag "This is a real job" campaign doesn't have to be just towards the restaurant industry. There's a lot of jobs out there that the uh, that the upper middle class doesn't consider a real job, like exotic dancers and you know the exotic dancers sure they have to pay for their own uh medical benefits but they also have to pay their own rent they have to buy their own food and so they go to work and what do you do at a job you make money and exotic dancers they do make money and uh their tips often i get uh uh, rivaled anything, you know, their tips in one night rivaled anything that I make in a week to a month, but that's not beyond, that's beyond the point. And I'm not talking about, uh, just women exotic dancers. There are men exotic dancers out there too. And there's also that pressure where you got to look a certain way so that people are more inclined to, uh, tip you more. And that gets rough over time because, uh, you know, some people, you know, they have a family or something like that and can't afford or uh, are too tired or the gym just isn't open when uh, when they have the time. It, uh, and, you know, getting gym membership, that costs money, and which is most of the time money we don't have. Now, I don't want any single, any one of you that listens to my show to ever, 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 ever feel body shamed you are who you are you're a great person and you know if they make fun of the way you look the way you talk the your the uh, anything fuck them 
I mean, you got a job, you're living comfortably. You know, you could be living better, sure, but you're living comfortably, you're happy. Some of us are still able to support our families in order to, uh, you know, it pays the bills. So, you know, once again, hashtag, this is a real job. I pay bills. I have a roof over my head. What more do you want from me? But the beautiful part about these people that work in corporate jobs uh, that look down and say, well, why don't you get a real job? Well, if they lose their job, they uh, have to go searching for another job and most of the time have to start back at ground zero. Whatever the work that they've made, uh, made a name for themselves in that job that they just had, most of the time gets thrown right out the window. It's just like, hey, I got this resume. Yeah, well, back to the back of the line with like everybody else. But when you can prove that you're a good server, all you have to do is just walk in and say, I've been a server for five years. And if they've got an opening, you've been a server for five years, we could use a server. Uh, get in here. Here's your uniform. Uh, try not to swear at the customers too much. And uh, we'll get along fine. But we're not talking about, uh, one thing that we're not talking about here is a career. Now, some people out there, I'm sure, uh, think of being a, being a server, being a bartender is a great career. It's something that they could do for a very, very long time. But uh, some some of us don't think of it as a career. Sure, we. I mean, I met tons and tons of people who were going to school during the day and waiting tables at night or bartending at night. Uh, I was, even at one time, I was going to school learning audio production and at night I would go uh, wash dishes at a steakhouse. And that gave me an ultra appreciation for uh, dishwashers. You, you guys, you guys are the heartbeat of the service industry because that job is really hard to do Kind of sucks, but uh, you know, uh, but you guys, without the dishwashers, uh, you know, you have no more plates. You have piled up dirty dishes everywhere, and it's that one person that if he doesn't show up for work, everything goes to hell. And you know, if you don't think so, uh, you know, hide your hide your busing bin one of these times. Don't let them or tell them, don't bother, come up. I'll bring it down uh, whenever it needs to be done. And you'll see how fast things pile up. And most importantly, treat your dishwashers with respect. I mean, uh, at first when I started dishwashing, I wasn't expecting tips. I just thought I was just going to go down in the hole and just wash dishes, try to wash them as fast as I possibly can so they can get turned over and put back uh, into the kitchen. But the servers every now and then would come down, give me three bucks, five bucks, whatever they felt like that they, uh, I they felt like I deserved. Granted, I probably didn't deserve that much because I wasn't that quick about going up and getting the bus tubs because there were nights where I didn't even know that there were no bussers, and uh, so I, you know, they you know, once in a while the servers were like, "Where's the dishwasher? We need this uh, bus tub taken." And but then all of a sudden on Friday and Saturday nights or Wednesday nights, uh, Wednesday through Saturday nights or something like that, there are bussers, and I didn't have to do that. And that pile of dishes gets really huge and intimidating, and it, it really works on your anxiety. So if you have a dishwasher in your restaurant, uh, make sure to treat them good. Um, you know, I'm not saying over tip them. Don't give them. You know, uh, you got to live too. But make sure you take care of them because their job is really, really difficult. You think your job's hard dealing with a uh, asshole customer who, does, uh, you know, sent their food back because the steak wasn't cooked just right, and they sat there and questioned your you and your lifestyle. The dishwasher is by themselves and has huge anxiety because the dishes just won't stop. So, dishwasher, definitely hashtag this is a real job. Now, well, there are probably people out there, I just realized uh, after taking a quick pause there for a second, that 
are probably sitting back thinking uh, that calling a exotic dancer is a real job. Well, yes, some of you are going to have problems with that, and that's just the way life is nowadays. But you got to think about it once again. They have to deal with customers. They have to uh, show off their talents in order to uh, make money. I mean, it's not just about being naked because if it was just about being naked, they wouldn't have to practice pole dancing or dancing, period. It's a very athletic job. And it's uh, and it's very difficult, and they have to deal with probably uh, some of the slimiest people on the face of the planet. It doesn't matter whether they're a male or a female exotic dancer; they've got to deal with some slimy people. And uh, some people just have that mentality where, like, hey, this is a club; we can do things like this. But no. Uh, and then the bouncers have to get involved or if the, uh, if somebody gets hurt or, uh, it's not just problems like the DJ didn't play my song sort of thing, but they've got to work out constantly. They've got to make sure that, uh, they're presentable. Otherwise the tips don't come in and that's where the work comes in for the exotic, uh, dancers type people because that. Uh, taking care of themselves alone is a job and not just getting up on stage and uh, showing off what God gave them. It it's, you know, they got to take care of themselves. Otherwise they might not be able to work again tomorrow. And yes, I don't care what you people think. I am sticking up for the exotic dancing people of the world because they're people too. And it's not a sexist thing. It's not, a perverted thing it's a money thing that's what it all comes down to and it we all got to do things in order to make money if it's not in your comfort zone don't do that sort of job it, like me i would never be an exotic dancer because i don't have abs i've got an ab or you know uh, what i what, what i consider an ab and uh i'm not comfortable I well, I don't dance at all, uh, and I'm not comfortable doing that sort of thing in front of people, so I don't do it. Do I look down on people that do do it? No, because they're people too, and it's the same thing working on working in the service industry. Do I look down on a bartender? God no. Do I look down on a server? Hell no. I can't look down on a server because usually I'm sitting down and they're taller than me at that point. Because us. As people of the service industry or the entertainment industry, I think I should have gone with that instead of saying exotic dancer, but it's too late. I'm going to I'm gonna post this podcast as is. People of the service industry or the in- entertainment industry, we all work our asses off to make the bare minimum in order to live. Now, they're saying uh, the Biden administration right now is saying that they're going to raise minimum wage, the federal minimum wage, to $15 an hour. Now, is that going to make things better for the service industry? Probably not, uh, the way I see it. This is just my opinion, people, because when uh, the cost of living will go up, when everybody is making a certain amount of money, you know, they realize that inflation costs and uh, people are making more money, that gives, uh, that makes the restaurant industry have to raise the prices on their product that they're selling. So beer prices will go up, food prices will go up. And uh, so in order to pay their servers. Now, uh, some of the states out there have health plans out uh, in place so that pe- people in the service industry can have some form of insurance. It's not necessarily cheap, but if you don't have it, you really should look at it. I don't care what how old you are because... Back when I was in my 20s and I was bartending, I thought, I'm in my 20s. I'm in my prime, people. I don't get sick. Now, there were a couple times where I probably should have gone to the doctor when I was in my 20s. I, it wasn't anything serious, just a, a horrible head cold. That was, I, But um, I still went to work because that's that's my work ethic. And, you know, I can still stand up. I can still talk to people. 
yeah, I'm, I'm going to work. Even though my head is completely clogged up, my muscles hurt, you know, I'm still going to go to work. Why? Because I have to. If I don't work, I don't make money. And you get, get back to the definition of a job. It's something that people need. The, the world needs right now servers, bartenders, uh, entertainers, uh, uh, people that work concessions, uh, people, you know, because it's not automated. There may be a day in the future where it's all automated. Like I, I, a while back on my Instagram page, I posted a picture of a bar where all the bottles were hanging from a ceiling with, you know, like, uh, those pressure bo- bubble pour things. And it makes, it makes a drink all with robotic arms. Maybe that day is coming. Uh, but it's not right now. The world actually does need servers, bartenders, concession workers, entertainers, because computers can't do it yet. The technology just isn't there. And without you people, these corporate bigwigs are going to have to fend for themselves. You know, they, you know, they're going to probably, they probably look down on the food delivery uh, people that bring their food to their office. They look down on the deli where that they ordered their food, where the person that had to go get it and bring it to their office and sit there and absolutely think that their job uh, is most important and the world would absolutely collapse without them. Now, I think a lot of people realized, at least a few people that I talked to, after 2021, the whole COVID uh, pandemic, well, as if the pandemic is over, but when all the restaurants closed in 2021 because of the pandemic, uh, they realize, oh, fuck, I have to fend for myself. I can't just swing by a restaurant, pick something up for the family, and uh, and then we eat that way. We, I actually have to make something tonight. And I think that has something to do with uh, all the top ramen disappearing off the shelves. You know, because you, know, you, you guys remember... Uh, few years back you used to buy a pack of fifth or a box of 50 for four bucks and now you're lucky to get uh you know the single packs and it's it got crazy there for a little while people actually learned how had to learn how to fend for themselves cook for themselves and some of some of the people not everybody but some of the people that was a huge culture shock and i'm sure some there were some people that uh you know, say, okay, um, I guess I'll have some toast. Fuck, I don't have a toaster. Uh, I, I got to go uh, put my mask on and go over to Best Buy and buy a toaster. My God, there are so many different versions of a toaster here. Do I want the toaster oven or I, do I want the pop-up toaster? Hey, this toaster can uh, burn Darth Vader's face in the side of it. That's pretty cool. Uh, you know, so, simple things. And... You know, they sit back and think, oh, I want a steak or I want, uh, you know, with that steak, what do I want? I want uh, steamed broccoli and I want mashed potatoes and I want a side salad with uh, Italian dressing on top of that. Fuck, how do you make all of that? And hopefully during the restaurant closure during the pandemic, they realized that how important the people, the ser- people of the service industry are. And they had to stay home. So they had to, they have to realize how important the people of the entertainment industry are. And I mean, uh, even you guys that serve popcorn uh, at the movie theater, they've got to sit back and realize how important your job is too. And not to mention during that pandemic, when the uh, restaurants closed, you all had to go on unemployment. They could work from home. And, you know, they uh, sit in front of their computer and do whatever it is they do. Sure, they got some work done, but we in the service industry had it hard because we can't serve uh, drinks over a computer. Now, maybe we can, uh, but they'd be virtual drinks. 
you can't. And virtual drinks are ultimately non-alcoholic, so uh, you know maybe it was safer that way. And I don't know. That's why I encourage all of you to that listen to my show to use hashtag this is a real job when you post pictures videos of your or whatever of yourself on social media when you're at work and just say having a great day at work bartending whatever place you work at hashtag this is a real job in fact in the hey bartender podcast store www.heybartenderpodcast i've made a t-shirt that's just simply says hashtag this is a real job and you know I'm not, uh, you know, I'd love for you guys to go out and buy that shirt and then go out and support each other because you guys, without you guys, a lot of people prob- during the pandemic probably came close to going hungry. Why? Because they don't know how to fend for themselves. And I'm sure during the pandemic, some of those people uh, actually missed the sarcasm, the repartee, the whatever. Uh, that go on between the server, the bartender, and the customer. Uh, and, you know, uh, that's uh, the restaurant that you, they choose to go to is an escape. It's something different, change of scenery. And when they had to go through the year of not being able to do any of that, they had to have realized how important and how special that every single one of you that work in the restaurant industry or in the entertainment industry uh, are. They have to understand that. If they don't, their heads are so far up their ass, They, some kind of analogy uh, about uh, sneezing and farting at the same time. I don't know. I didn't have anything prepared for that. So anyway, people, it is last call. Last call for alcohol. I appreciate all of you for listening to Hey Bartender Podcast. You guys are the greatest people ever. Thank you for the reviews on iTunes. Thank you for the ratings on iTunes. Uh, Makes me feel really good when I see those. Feel free to jump on iTunes and give me a rating uh, or leave me a note on there. Tell me what you think of the show. It's all really appreciated. Remember to visit www.heybartenderpodcast.com. You can pick up some Hey Bartender Podcast swag including a Hey Bartender Podcast official t-shirt or a hashtag This Is A Real Job t-shirt. Just go check it out and find something that you like. And you know what? Uh, real quick note, I have often uh, debated of doing what I've seen on the internet, what seems like a good deed where I take the money that I make from the uh, selling the... Uh, swag on my website and uh over tip a server that does a great job or a server that just seems to deserve it there's no such thing as over tipping but give them a large tip but i don't want to record it and it because it almost feels like that i'm you know trying to make hey i'm a great you know look at me i'm a great guy i just gave this server 400 bucks No, I don't want to do that. I would love, though, to be able to go into a restaurant, give them a big tip, maybe leave behind a Hey Bartender podcast poker chip just so they know I was there, and then they can do whatever they want with it, whether they post it on social media or do nothing at all. That's totally up to them. I may do that, but in order to do that, I need your guys' help. And the best way you can help me out, go to Hey Bartender Podcast dot com buy a t-shirt buy two and so i can make a little bit of money so i can make a server's day anonymously and you know i'll promote the podcast to them but this isn't this isn't going to be my big tiktok opportunity i'd like to offer a special thanks to fooddiva.com for uh giving me the bazooka joe shot uh if you guys go out and try that Let me know what you think about it. In fact, if you want to tell me anything, you want to tell me an anonymous story that you would like read over the show, or you have a drink special that you want me to be read over the show and promote the shit out of you for it, email me dude at heybartenderpodcast.com. I would love to do that. So any of you uh, just want to 
event or something like that, email me, dude at heybartenderpodcast.com. So that's it for this quick shot episode of Hey Bartender Podcast. Tune in this Saturday where my guest will be Ashley Cardinal. Some of you might know her as the Canadian Ginger Girl on TikTok. She is awesome. We had a great conversation. I can't wait for you guys to hear it. So remember, uh, this Saturday, new episode of Hey Bartender Podcast with my special guest, Ashley Cardinal, with musical guest, Divide the Day. Make sure you listen to that. So until next time, ladies and gentlemen, I wish you all lots of love, lots of sex, lots of happiness. And remember, don't take any shit from anyone. Good night. I think I need another drink. What do you mean it's let's go? I just got hit. Hashtag this is a real job.